In this chapter, we're going to be reviewing and introducing concepts in geometry and transformations. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the properties of regular polygons. Okay, hi everybody. So, in this lesson here, we're going to take a look at what we call regular polygons. Now, let's just going to back that up a little bit. A polygon, remember, is a closed planar figure, okay? So it's closed, meaning that there's an inside and an outside, and it's a planar, it's on a, on a flat piece of paper, uh, that can be formed by joining three or more line segments. And we name them, okay, usually based on the number of sides that they've got. And so let's just kind of zoom in on this. So, I mean, you're already familiar with a lot of these. A triangle's got three sides, a quadrilateral's got four sides, and we've looked at those before. But now you've got uh, some others here, the pentagon with five sides, hexagon at six, heptagon at seven, Octagon at eight, nonagon, and then we've got the dodecagon, sorry, not the dodecagon, the decagon at 10, and then the dodecagon at 12. And notice we've, we've skipped over the 11 here. That's uh, just because it's not uh, as common a shape. Um, although there are some examples uh, uh, even kind of around us, you just don't notice them as, as much. Anyway, so here are your, your common polygons. Now, one of the things that we want you to be able to do is to figure out the sum of the angles inside these, these polygons here. Now, when it comes to a triangle, that's easy. You already know that. That's 180 degrees. And when it comes to a quadrilateral, this is another one that in a previous lesson we'd already talked about. That's 360 degrees. But what happens with the rest of these guys? Uh, is, there a, is there a sum uh, of the angles in a pentagon that we can use can kind of go back to repeatedly? And the answer is yes, there is. And I want to show you how they, they come up with this. I'm going to show you just a little, little example here. Let's, let's talk about the pentagon here. So let's say I draw, I don't know, pentagon. So something like that. It's got to have five sides, right? So what we can do here, maybe I'll change colors a little bit. What we can do here is I'm going to draw a point. It doesn't even have to be in the dead center here, but I'm going to draw a point in the, the center or the middle of this uh, this shape here and then I'm going to connect all of the vertices to that center. Okay? Now, because this was a, a pentagon, I had five, five sides, which means that when I connected all of those vertices to the center, I get five triangles. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. Five triangles. Now, each of those triangles, if you add up all the angles inside the triangle, if I add up angle, 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 each time I add up the three angles inside these triangles here, I'm going to get 180, which means that the, the sum of the angles, the sum of the angles in this pentagon here is going to be five times 180 degrees. Except that, remember that this middle portion here, I drew that, that point after I drew the pentagon. I didn't need that, that middle point there, that center point there, to have a pentagon, which means I introduced all of these angles, okay, uh, in all of these triangles here. So each one of these triangles has an, an angle that's in the center here that isn't actually part of the pentagon. So even though I added up all of the angles inside the triangles, I also added up this interior portion. I don't really want that. But that's okay, that's easy to deal with because the angle all the way around that center there is 360 degrees. So all I have to do is subtract 360 degrees from that. And that's the sum of the angles inside a shape here. Now, I can generalize this, okay? I can generalize this to n sides so where n can be any number of sides, right? So if I know the number of sides, it can be six sides, seven sides, eight sides, whatever. The sum is going to be n times 180 degrees minus 360 degrees for that center here. And that's the formula that we can use to figure out what the sum of the angles are inside a, a uh, polygon, okay? So we'll put this off to the side here. I'll write this down here. So the, in general, for a polygon, uh, uh, sorry, I was gonna I was gonna write that a little bit differently, and then I kind of changed my mind part way through. Uh, let's I'm gonna go back to that. So for a polygon with n sides, the sum 
of the interior angles is, and our little formula here will be, okay, we'll use, we'll say S for sum is going to be N times 180, just like we wrote, minus 360 degrees. We're going to come back and practice that in a bit here. Now, once we've talked about that, there's another thing to consider here, something that we call a regular polygon. And regular polygons are where all the interior angles are equal and all the side lengths are equal, okay? Um, so what that means is you, you just got this nice, it's, it's, it's kind of a pretty one to look at. Now what I drew there, this, this was not a regular pentagon because my sides were not all the same. But if the sides were all the same, I should draw like this, if the sides were all the same, all the angles would be all the same. Okay, and, and that's what we call a regular, a regular polygon. Now, if you wanted to figure out the angle, okay, the each individual angle, okay, each individual angle in an n-sided regular polygon, oh boy, there's a lot going on there, n-sided, regular, meaning they're all the same, polygon, okay, each angle, Okay, let's say, we'll use, we'll use theta for the angle here, is going to be the sum, okay, the sum of the angles, so n times 180 minus 360, but then I'm going to divide that by n because there will be n different angles in there, and that's how big each of those angles was going to be, but that has to be in a regular polygon. Just, just a regular old polygon, like a regular octagon, doesn't necessarily, sorry, wow. I, I, sh I shouldn't have said that. A regular octagon, all of the sides and the angles would be the same. But if it's just a plain octagon where we're not being careful about that, well, then the sides and the angles might be a little bit different there. Now, there's one last thing that we want to consider before we go into, uh, into looking at some examples here, and that is, I'm going to write it out like this. This is a what we call a complete tiling, okay? Is it possible for a certain shape to be used as a tile that can cover a floor completely without, without gaps? That's an interesting question here. So one of the things, that, I mean, you might have seen, we know square tiles can be used, because you've probably seen these all over the place here. So you've got little square tiles, and you can put those together, and if you have enough of them, you can, you can cover right the, the floor and there's no gaps in it. Well the reason why that's true, and I'm going to zoom in on this, the reason why that's true is because at the corners of the squares when you butt them together, okay, for squares if I've got four of them there I can go all the way around that that point of intersection there completely without leaving gaps there and that's because the corner of a square is 90 degrees. Okay, the corner of each square is 90 degrees, okay, and 90 divides 360 degrees nicely. What I mean by that is if you take 360 degrees, divide that by 90 degrees, I get 4, which is how many squares I need to go around. Now, we can do the same thing with, let's say, uh, hexagons. Okay. And if you've, if you've ever played uh, some board games here, you're gonna, you'll recognize uh, that there's all sorts of board games out there that use hexagons just because uh, they tile nicely. Okay? And so what happens here is if you look at the corner, once again, look at this corner right here. If you go all the way around that corner, okay, for 360 degrees, it looks like I've got three hexagons that meet there. Well, that's true because in a regular hexagon, okay, let's take a look at a regular hexagon. We're going to figure out what that, inter what that internal angle is. And I'll just zoom out a little bit here. We're going to figure out what that internal angle is here. So the angle theta is going to be 6 times 180 degrees minus 360, that's the formula for the sum of the angles inside a regular hexagon. We just want the one side angle, so we're going to divide that by 6. And it turns out when you do that, you get 120 degrees. Okay, well, so each inside angle in a hexagon, in a regular hexagon, is 120 degrees. Well, what's 360 degrees divided by 120? Well, the answer is 3. It's, it works out perfectly. 
okay? So you can tile, because that works out beautifully, you can tile the floor with hexagons because all you need to have is three of them together and at their corners they beautifully cover the full, the full circle. They, they complete a full rotation from side to side to side and back to side again. Now not every shape does that, okay? Not every shape does that. Let's check for example, okay, let's check the pentagon and we'll say the regular pentagon. Well, what we want to do here is we want to figure out what the interior angles are inside a regular uh, pentagon. Well, that's going to be 5 times 180 degrees minus 360 degrees. That's the sum of the angles, okay? And then I'm going to divide that by 5. I'm just going to do this on my calculator over here. So 5 times 180 minus 360 divided by 5, and I get 108 degrees, okay, which is great. Now. If we take 360, can I divide that by 108? 360 divided by 108, and I don't, I get 3.3 repeating, which means you can't tile okay, with a regular pentagon. It won't work, okay? It just won't work. Uh, because when I when I try to push the corners together, okay, I need just slightly more than three tiles to go around the the corners there. And I mean, you can't do that. You can't work with a that kind of weird fraction of a tile. So th that's the information that we want you to get out of this this lesson today. We're going to practice this a little bit. Let's zoom out here. Okay, I want you to know what a polygon is. I want you to know what this the how the naming works. Okay, and how the naming gives us the number of sides that you're working with. Okay, and it's all about the prefix there. Then I want you to know how to get the sum of all the angles inside any kind of a polygon. From there, I want you to know how to get each individual angle as long as it's a regular polygon. And then we want you to be able to determine whether once you've got that answer or uh, once, well, sorry, once you've got that answer, whether or not that you can use that particular shape as a tile to form a complete tiling. Okay, so in this particular question that we're going to start with here, it says fill in the table below with the sizes of the interior angles for each regular polygon. Okay, so remember how the formula works. Okay, our formula over here, if you've got n sides, then the angle is going to be n times 180 degrees minus 360 degrees all over n. Okay, so now if we've got a triangle, Okay, it's going to be 3 times 180 divided, sorry, not divided by, minus 360. And I'm going to divide that by 3. And I'm doing that all in one step here, okay? And when I press enter, I get 60 degrees. So each angle in a regular triangle, which would be an equilateral triangle, by the way, is going to be 60 degrees. In a square, okay, again, it's just going to be 4 because of the number of sides, 4 times 180 minus 360, close the brackets, divided by 4. And we get 90 degrees, which is exactly what you would expect. You know that the interior angles are going to be 90 degrees. Now, in a, in a previous example here, we already did the pentagon here. Okay, but let's just walk through that again. So I open up my brackets here, 5 times 180, minus 360, divided by 5, and we got 108 degrees. So as long as that's a regular pentagon, each corner is 108 degrees on the inside. Now, a hexagon. Hexagon, and I've already uh, mentioned this one as well here, but 6 times 180 minus 360 divided by 6, 120. And because 120 uh, divides 360, 360 divided by 120 is 3, because it does that nicely, we can use a hexagon to tile uh, a floor. Okay, what about a heptagon? Okay, well that's 7 times 180 minus 360 divided by 7. Now division by 7, that doesn't, that doesn't feel like it's going to be a nice answer. And it's not. Okay, so we get, what is that, 128.6, let's say. 128.6 degrees. Well, that's kind of an ugly angle, okay? And that is, that is clearly not going to divide 360 nicely. 
so that won't work. Let's try an octagon. So an octagon would be 8 times 180 minus 360 divided by 8 and 135. Okay, well, let's just take a quick look at that. 360 divided by 135, will I get a nice tiling out of that? Nope. Nope, because I've got a fraction of a, an angle in there. Nah, that won't work. So an octagon couldn't be used as a complete tiling. How about a nonagon? Oops. So that's going to be 9 times 180 minus 360 divided by 9. Get 140 degrees. Well, let's just take a look. 360 divided by 140, does that... Nope, no, that doesn't work nicely either, so that wouldn't give us a nice tiling. How about a decagon? That's going to be 10 multiplied by 180 minus 360 divided by 10, 144 degrees. Okay, 360 divided by 144. Ooh, that's so close, but that's actually 2.5. Not 25, there's 2.5. That's, that's no good. The fact that there's a, that decimal value there actually kind of stops that from being uh, a possible tiling. A dodecagon. This is where we're going to end here. 12 times 180 minus 360 divided by 12. 150 degrees. And actually, even at this point right here, you might be able to just tell by looking at it, 350 won't work. 360 divided by 150 is going to be, yeah, 2.4 here, right? It's not going to work. 150 is starting to get too big for that to work nicely. But anyway, there you go, and I hope you, you're getting a sense of how it is that we're coming up with the, the angles here. We take the total sum of the angles in a, in a polygon and then divide by the number of sides that you've got. Now, as long as it's a regular polygon, that's the procedure that you can use. Okay, so this question that was coming up here, and I was kind of setting up the stage for this one, says, what regular polygons can be used for a complete tiling? Well, we already kind of set you up for that. We already know that a square works, and we know that a hexagon works. Okay, but there was one other one in there that, that works. Now, as we went down from the hexagon, nothing from that point on worked. But if you go back up and think about that regular triangle, that equilateral triangle, Okay, the corner angle was 60 degrees. If you take 360 and divide that by 60, I do get a nice value. I get 6. So you can put 6 equilateral triangles, okay, 6 equilateral triangles. If we just pick a, a spot there, whoops, oh my, it's horrible. My middle triangle is horrible. <coughs> but I can put 6 triangles around that corner there. So equilateral triangle, I'm probably off the screen, oh no not, also works as a, as a tiling. So those are the three that you can use. Okay, so this question here says, a large regular hexagon is painted on the floor. Each side is three meters long. What is the area of the hexagon? Now here, I, th I think in, in your workbook it might say uh, triangle, and actually I want that to be, be a hexagon here. And I'm going to actually use a little sticky note here so I can draw this out a little bit bigger here. So what we're saying is, is this. We've got this large hexagon, okay, that's on the, the floor. So we want to figure out what the area of the entire hexagon is. But we know that each side length here is 3 meters, okay, all the way around 3 meters and so on, okay. Now I'm going to do like I did before. I'm going to put a dot in the center here and I'm going to connect each vertex, okay, I'm going to connect each vertex to that center. Now what I'm going to do is, well, sorry, I should say it like this. The area of my overall hexagon is going to be, whoops, sorry, it's going to be six times the area of each triangle. Okay, and each of those triangles is going to be the same as long as we, we keep in mind that this is a regular hexagon. So now let's focus our attention on this, this bottom one right here. In order to get the area of a triangle, it's got to be 1 half base times height. Well, I already know the base. I know that my base is 3. So what I don't know here is the height. Okay, so I'm going to drop an altitude here. And now I'm going to do some work over here just because 
I don't want to mess this thing up. I don't want this to be. Uh, I don't want this to be overly um, confusing with all the stuff being drawn on here. Up here, we know from a, a, some previous work that the interior angle. Okay, if I was to get rid of this line right here, you get rid of that line right there. That interior angle in a hexagon is 120 degrees. Got it. I know it. I've seen that, uh, that work before here. Now, what I'm doing though, when I connect that vertex to the, the center here, is I'm actually cutting that in half. So what happens here is although this angle is 120, the two angles on either side of it are going to end up being half of that or 60 degrees. Now, the reason why that's significant, that's important to me is that means I know down here, this angle right here is 60 degrees in this triangle. Because this distance straight across here is 3 meters, I know that this distance from here to here is going to be 1.5 meters. Now, the reason why that I even bother mentioning that is because in order for me to figure out the height of this triangle, well, guess what, everybody? I'm going to need to go back and use some trigonometry. So I look at my triangle here. I got a 60 degree angle. I want the height. And the height is the opposite side of that triangle, and the 1.5 is adjacent. Well, that's, that's tangent. So the tangent of 60 degrees is going to equal the height over 1.5. Now, I'm going to end up cross multiplying, and so this will end up becoming 1.5 times the tangent of 60 degrees is going to equal h. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my calculator here. And I'll enter that in. So it will be 1.5 multiplied by the tangent of 60 degrees. Whoops, nope. As soon as I did it, I saw it. Uh, wait a minute. I'm going to do this again. It'll be 1.5 multiplied by the tangent of 60 degrees. OK, and we're getting 2.598 blah, blah, blah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write 2.6 here. Now, that's not, that's not the value I'm going to use. I'm going to use this value right here in just a moment. But I'm going to write that down here. So now the area of each triangle is going to be 1 half multiplied by 3 multiplied by that 2.6. So there's my 2.6. I'm now going to just press multiply by uh, 0.5. That's the 1 half multiplied by 3. And the area that we're going to get here, if I round that, is going to be 3.9. 3.9 meters squared. Okay? 3.9 meters squared for each of those, rect uh, those triangles here. Now, now, bear in mind, I used the small triangle here to get the height. But when I found the area, I used the entire base there. Okay? I, I, I doubled that. So now, what I'm going to do is come back up to here. To figure out the area of the whole thing, it's going to be 6 times that area. So 6 times 3.9. So I'm going to take that answer there and multiply by 6. And I'm going to get 23.4. And here's where I'm going to finally round it. 23.4 meters squared is the area of that, of that uh, shape here. Now, let's walk through what happened here, how I did that. So first of all, I gave myself a little sketch of that hexagon. And I drew in my triangles. And I'm going to break this down into shapes that I'm comfortable with. I'm going to break it down into triangles. Okay? I know I'm going to connect the center to the midpoint there of the, the side, because that's going to be the height of that triangle. And I'm going to have to pull out some trigonometry here. Now, I go back to the work that I've done previously to figure out what that interior angle is. Okay, for whatever shape that we're using. Because the next time you do this, it might not be a hexagon you're working with. It could be an octagon or a, a decagon. So you're going to have to figure out what that angle is. Then you divide that by 2, and that becomes this little bit right here. I take half of that side length, okay, and I'm going to use the tangent ratio to figure out what the height of that triangle is. Once I've got that, it's 1 half the base, which is the side length you were given, and that height. And then I'm going to multiply that by the number of triangles in this particular shape. And that's how you would answer that question. It's a complicated one, probably the most complicated one in this chapter.
Okay, so just one more question here. It says each angle of a regular polygon has a measure of 162 degrees. How many sides does it have? Okay. So, well, I know that the angle, the angle in a regular, let's say, n-sided shape is going to be n times 180 degrees minus 360 degrees all over n. Well, now what we're doing here is I'm telling you that that angle was 162. And so that's still going to be n times 180 degrees minus 360 degrees over n. Now, you could go through and you could just, I mean, continue the chart that we did on the other page and just keep going until you get 162. Or you can get a little bit clever here. Um, I'm going to cross multiply. This is like 162 over 1. And it, it doesn't matter that this has got a complicated expression in the numerator. It's still a fraction here. So I'm just going to multiply. So this will become 162n is equal to 1 times the numerator, which is, doesn't going to change anything. So n times 180 minus 360. Um, now, what I would do is I'm going to add 360 to both sides. And then I'm going to subtract this 162n from both sides. And really what that's going to do is that's going to just put the, the two terms with the n on the same side. Now, the reason why that's significant or that's important is because these are like terms now. Now, I've written them in kind of a backwards order there. Well, that's okay. It's 180n's minus 162n's. So well, that's going to leave me with 18n's. And then to get what n is, I just divide. And so you're going to get 360 divided by 18 is equal to n. And it turns out that's 20. So we're going to have 20 sides okay, in a shape where the interior angle is 162 degrees.